Well, we've done a lot of work with, with how fast something moves. Let's see if we can work with how fast something spins. So let's see what we can do. Let me, let me since we're going to be working with things spinning, let me draw a circle. Since things that spin go in circles. So there's my circle. And then let me just draw the positive x-axis, because it'll come handy in a second. So that's the positive x-axis. And let's say that I have an object, and this circle is the object's path. So let's say this is the object. And it's going around in a circle in a counterclockwise direction. It's not squiggly counterclockwise, it's just going around this way. And let's say I wanted to figure out, or I wanted to quantify uh, how much, or how fast this thing is spinning. So one thing that you've, you're probably uh, familiar with is you know revolutions per second or rotations per second. So so let's write that down. Let's just say let's just say for the sake of argument that this was moving at I don't know one revolution per second. So after one second it goes back, then another second. So that's how fast it's spinning. One revolution per second. One revolution. I'll put just as rev per second. So let's see if we can quantify that in angles, and we'll do it in radians. But you could always convert it back to uh, degrees if you want. So let me, I don't know if you can see that line. But let's let's just say that theta is the angle between the radius from the center to that object and the positive x-axis. So this is theta. So if this object is traveling at one revolution per second, how many radians per second is it traveling? Well, how many radians are there in a revolution? Well, there's two pi radians in a revolution, right? What one uh, go around in a circle is two pi radians. So we could we could say times so this equals one rev per second times two pi radians per rev. Right? And then you the revolutions will cancel out and you have one times two pi, so you have two pi radians per second. So this equals two pi radians per second. So that's interesting. I could we now ex know exactly, you know, after 5 seconds how many radians has it gone or after half a second how many radians has it gone. But that's that might be vaguely useful. Let's see if we can somehow convert from this notion of how fast something is spinning to its actual uh uh to its actual speed. I was tempted to say a velocity, but its velocity is always changing, right? Because the direction is always changing. But the magnitude of the dir of the velocity is staying the same. So its speed is staying the same. But we'll we'll say v for speed, because that that's what they tend to do in, in most formulas that you you you'll see. So let's think about it this way. In in one revolution so there's a couple of ways we can think about this. But as we go in, in as we go one revolution, how far has this object traveled? Well it's traveled the circumference of this of this circle. And in order to the circumference we have to know the radius of the circle. So let's say that the radius is r. Let's say it's in meters, r meters. So how many how many um how how many uh, meters will I travel in one second then? Well, it, you could you could do the same thing up here. One revolution per second times 2 pi r, where r is the radius, whoops, 2 pi r, you can ignore that line, meters per revolution, right? That's just the circumference of the thing, of the circle. And that equals, the revolutions cancel out, 2 pi r, 2 pi r meters per second. So it's interesting. We given the radius and um, how many revolutions per second, we can now figure out its velocity. So this right here is its is how how fast it's spinning, and this is the the object's actual speed, right? And this term of how fast something's spinning that's called angular velocity. And of course, you know the the term for how fast something uh, is actually moving is velocity. So and 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 just so you know, the term for angular velocity is this this curvy uh, w. I think that's lowercase omega. But that, that little curly, that's angular velocity, right? So in this case, angular velocity is equal to 2 pi radians per second. And what's the velocity equal to, or at least the magnitude of the velocity? I know the direction's always changing. Well, we know that the velocity is equal to 
2 pi r meters per second. So if we just ignore the units for a second, what do you see the difference between the angular velocity and the velocity? The angular velocity in this case is 2 pi, and the velocity is 2 pi r. So in general, if you just multiply the angular velocity times r, you get the velocity. So angular velocity times the radius is equal to the velocity. Or you can divide both sides of that by r, and you get the angular velocity is equal to the velocity divided by the radius. And this is a formula that you should know by heart, although it's good to kind of know where it came from. And another way, I guess even a, I did it this way to maybe give you an intuition, because uh, I always have to work with numbers, especially when I'm, I'm new to a concept, so that's why I said one revolution per second instead of just putting everything as a variable. But another way to, to really to think about it is, is what is the definition of a radian? By definition, a radian, if, if, this, is, if this angle is x radians, is x radians. It's what it's it's an angle, and it also tells us that the arc that is that is um, that is kind of projected by this angle is equal to x radiuses radiuses. So if we if each radius is two meters, it would be x times two meters. So if this is x radians, then this is going to be x times r meters, and that actually comes from the definition. The definition of of the um, of, of the radian, and that might that might be more intuitive to you than the original expression or less. So hopefully one of those two works. But as you can see, if this angle is x and this is and this distance is x times r, and if omega is change in that angle over change in time, that's omega. That says omega, like this omega. Then we know this is true too that velocity is just change in this over change in time, right? Velocity is change in, the radius doesn't change, change in x times r divided by change in time. And we know, once again, that this is omega. So kind of another way, we just showed again, that omega times the radius is equal to the velocity, or the angular velocity times the radius is equal to the velocity. And this is a, a useful thing to learn. We'll see in a couple of things. We'll, you know, when I do the proof for uh, centripetal acceleration in calculus, I'm going to use this fact. And when I, um, and actually, I'm probably going to record that video now. I'm actually going to show you the the law of conservation of angular momentum, which is very similar to the law of conservation of momentum, but it deals with things spinning. And this is going to, this notion of angular velocity is going to come in useful. So this is the important takeaway. The W equals V over R, and hopefully my video has not confused you and has shown you that W, the rate at which um, the angle is changing, is equal to the velocity of the object, or the magnitude of the velocity, divided by the radius um, around, of the circle that it's, it's spinning. I'll see you in the next video.